everybody. Uh, Danella here is doing a shin and uh, Raymar, Raymar over here, <coughs> uh, he's got the rump. Uh, obviously uh, rump is a cut that we use in summer and you have on steaks and the shin here is mainly done in winter. Okay. Now as you can see, here's the shin. Now that's the hind shin, come off the hind quarter. Now look at that. These guys have to minimise the waste 
okay? And try not cutting to the meat. They cut into the meat that's known as the knife score. Okay, and the judges will judge fairly heavily against it. This is called a dry tip that's from, as you can see, a lot of fat removed. Danilo here is doing a knuckle. Now, a knuckle is used for a sizzle steak and a lot of other cuts. Now, there is different ways you can prepare this, okay? Now, Harvey Beef exports to 40 countries around the world. Sometimes we do what they call is a thick flake, where they leave some other cut on. Here's the end product, the rump. Okay, as you can clearly see, it started off heavy fat and connective tissue, and now they work it down to a rump. Okay, now this is pretty simple. Guys, these guys have gone to an outside or an outside flat. Uh, first of all, there's a heel muscle which they remove. So I'll both show you the heel muscle. Now that gets packed with the hind shins as well. Now, both slices here are now what we call the outside flat. Now, for those of you that fly corn silver side in the winter, um, what we do at Harvey Beef is we do process an outside flat and we make that into a corn silver side, okay? And we're pretty lucky that corn silver side can be bought just up the road at Bunbury Farmers Market, everybody. Um, and that's a product that a lot of people use uh, either in winter uh, on, a, on a cold night um, with some potatoes and then the next day they use it for sandwich steak. Here, Danilo's got that called the eye round, okay? Joe show everyone the eye round. Now the eye round uh, has a weird name. People also call it the Jurello, okay? Here's the Jurello as well. And as you can clearly see, guys, we've gone from like an eight kilo of meat and they've got three different products out of it. Here's an outside flat, okay? Outside flat's what we use for corn silver side. Now once again, you can see it's looking for fat depth and we're all judging on the fat depth and the specification. Okay, great job. Well done boys, now we're on to the tenderloin. Now we all remember the before photo on the tenderloin. Now, this product here can be worth up to 50, 65, $75 a kilo. Okay, so every gram or every 10 grams these guys remove that they shouldn't have to, comes at a cost to us, okay? And then ultimately the producer. But also, if you want to tidy it up, you want to free it all fat, you don't want any marble scores, uh, sorry, any cut scores or knife scores. A common mistake the boners make is they do, they hook in, show me the top peak, show the top where the boners could potentially cause a bit of damage, will be right there, okay? When they bone it out, they can hook it, and that's called a knife score. Once again, we're back to the knuckle over this side. And here we're going to get the flank steak. Joe, hold up the flank steak. The flank steak, everybody, is a very common Asian cut, okay? Uh, known as a teardrop or a flank steak, okay? Um, the Asians, oh, and over here, Peter's got a knuckle, okay? Once again, knuckles used for scissor scape, cut very thin, could be used for crumb steak as well. Every different muscle has a different cooking purpose and a different cooking method. Okay? Great job, Omar. As you can clearly see, they're just removing the fat. They're they're just tidying it up, okay? They're removing enough so they can do the bare minimal work and get the maximum result. Interesting fact that Harvey Beef, depending on the size of the labor force, uh, we, can, we can run up to 16, 14, 18. I think something like that these days. We have 16 boners uh, and 14 slices and some knife hands. And all they're doing is preparing these cuts the customer specification, okay? The hindquarters today were done off yearling cattle, which their specification is between 220 and 280 kilos. Okay, Joe's, this is the top side, everybody. Okay, look, there's many specifications. You can have a top side cap on or cap off, um, but this is the top side, which is winter cut. Peter's holding up the shins as well. Once again, a winter cut on the, on the hindquarter. 
So yeah. Great job. Here's the top side as well, guys. And as you can clearly see, uh, it looks presentable. Then, like I was saying before at Harvey B, we just vacuum seal it, run it through a dip tank, and it goes into a garden. Joe's name changes from a strip line to a porterhouse. Okay? Now, there's a few specifications here. Now, Pete, if you can show them uh, the, how they measure the tail length. What they do, they measure two fingers or big mill from there, and they'll make a square cut. Okay? Uh, also, some fat depth. Fat depth uh, for this specification today is 10 mil, and Peter has showed you there. So now he is removing any bone chips because it comes off the rib sets, and that's where the bone chip is the most prevalent. Well done, gentlemen. Big round of applause. Congratulations. Well done, well done, well done. Okay, guys, we'll see everyone at 12 o'clock for the final of the money competition. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, let's introduce the two slices. Coming up, boys, the grand of applause, please. Okay, guys, first of all, we've got last year's winner, Ryan, and this year's challenger, Raymar. Okay, I'm not going to let you off the hook, Ryan. First of all, mate, how long have you been a hockey buddy? I've run 10 years. 10 years, and you were last year's winner. Who did you meet last year? For real. For real, okay, mate, no worries. Hey, and the best thing you work in Harvey B? I have no idea. Just haven't got it. I'm putting these guys on the spot, so it's, uh, it's, it's fun. Roma, good luck, buddy. Okay, everybody, we're going to go with a five second countdown, okay? Let's go. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay guys, and once again, this is all about precision, okay? Um, and specifications. Now, they're all different. Clearly see here that Ryan's taking a different approach to Raymar. He started on a different cut. He's gonna start on what they call the teardrop or the plant state. And Raymar started on the shins. Okay guys, it's very good, it's very good. I like it, all the bones, looks like a lot of people are interested. Anyone in the audience, what's their favourite cut of meat? What's your favourite cut of meat? What's your favourite cut of meat? What do you like to eat? Brisket. Brisket? Brisket. Brisket, perfect. Unfortunately, we don't have a brisket on the hot water. Uh, the brisket, once again, guys, that's more of an American cut of meat and used for the slow cooking. Um, and it's become very popular. Okay, guys, so we're going to put out a tin now. And he's going to explain the rest and what these guys are doing. So, good luck. This is where it's important after watching the bonus do their work, how well they uh, they brought the primals down here for these guys to now come in and tidy up. So every cut is going to have different specifications, so different things they're looking for. So they basically need to come in, make sure there's the right fat there, there's no knife scores, no foreign muscle left on there, there's any tendons, tidy that up. And depending on the cut will depend on what they're looking for with that. Now they'll have a lot of lock cuts here, we try not to waste as much as we can as we're going through. So foreign muscle is a really important one because at the end of the day, if you have something like a tenderloin or an eye fillet which sits, the end of it sits next to the rump, you don't want to leave that on the rump. It's a big price difference in the cut and also the eating quality, so you want to make sure it's as clean as possible. So while speed is important, it's also really important to have nice clean cuts and make sure they're cutting along the right cutting lines. You can see how quickly these guys are going through here. So we've got a tenderloin down here on my left, your right. So you can see how that comes in now with a lot of fat there. Maybe a little bit of kidney fat as Ben mentioned before. And then we tie it up nicely. So we remove most of that fat there. There's a little side strap that runs down the side that isn't quite stuck on. So they'll tidy that up. And that's when you go to the nice restaurants and get that beautiful eye fillet. Comes from one of these. And it's this work that makes that uh, possible. So ben and I, as we mentioned before, we're in the sales team. These guys make our job so much easier by the quality in which they're slicing and boning as well.
Alright, so we're about halfway through here. These guys are absolutely flying. A little flag stake there we've got. So down here we've got this strip loin, or as everyone knows, porterhouse, uh, when it's cut into steaks. So we're looking on there, some fat there, we're looking for a tail length, which is from the edge of the eye muscle, um, making sure there's no bone chips, and then obviously getting some nice steaks cut up out of that. So while they're cutting them up to these, uh, these pieces here, you can, there are some cuts you can cut into further subprimals. So these are our primals. A good example is a rump. So you, from your rump, you're going to end up with a nice D rump and a tri tip. That's called a D rump because it looks like a D. Uh, from there, there we go, on, the, uh, on the, your left, my right here. So as he's cutting that up, he's going to cut the tri tip off the end there. And then we're going to be left with a D rump. From the D-Rump, you can actually cut the cap off there as well. It's on your, on your rump steak, you see that nice little piece at the top with the fat. That's really popular. Um, very, very nice cut of, cut of meat as well. Very big over in South America for the picanha. And then from there as well, you're left with the Ross bit, which is not much fat on there. So here we go. This is a tri-tip now that's just been finished off. So as you can see, there's not much fat in there. It's a very underrated piece of meat. It's delicious. So while everyone might know that you know a few big cuts like a rump and a, a scotch billet and an eye fillet, there are a lot of other great cuts uh, that aren't as well known but are delicious, have different flavour and texture qualities as well. There we've got the D-Rump. It's nice and tidy up. So we're working on this chip one again here on my right. So again, he's just making sure there's not much fat there, tidying up a little bit, nice square cut. Again, making sure there's not too much fat on there, but just enough as well. Gives it a little bit of extra flavor. will show as well where the tail length is measured, which is a really important part too. So with the specifications, so you can see there it's showing up. So again onto the tenderloin here. So if you can see from that point there, there is a lot of extra fat left on there, little scraps which will get tidied up nicely and really come into a beautiful looking tenderloin. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, they're both, both highly skilled. Okay, I'm just having a quick look here, and I wouldn't want to be the judges. This one is definitely going to be close. Uh, we're here getting towards the end of it now, obviously. Uh, look, amazing, they're both on the top side. Uh, just some quick specifications about the top side. The top side, the face needs to be cut off or removed. And then just obviously looking around for any bone chips. I'll tip it over and I'll clean up the bottom of it, remove any um, gristle or meat, and just trim it up. Any bone stores or tendons are removed, as you can see here. What we do, we'll pack that off. They can also take your cap off and call it a top side cap off. What up, Ryan? I know this is going to be very really close. Ryan, well done. What we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, give us 15 minutes to score. We're going to take a 15 minute, get all the competitors on stage, and we'll announce the winners. Go on. Okay, everybody, welcome back. Welcome back. First of all, before I read out the results, um, I'd like to get everyone up here from the Hutton Beef Crew that made it um, possible today. So I'll start with all the judges. So can all the judges come up? Peter, come up please. Thank you, stand with every guys. Uh, Joe Vigetta and uh, Johnny, come up please guys. We're going to get everyone up. Awesome.
also get the general manager up while he's here too, please, by your car. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, it's great, mate. Thank <laughs> you. 